So My Hero Academia has, you know, grown in popularity over the years, right? Oh yeah, absolutely. And your character, though he's a villain, it seems like the fan base absolutely loves Dobby. You, so what do you what do you think about that, and how do you prepare for that role? Well, it's. Um, it's a bit of a shock, honestly. I mean, I always thought he was super cool from his introduction on, but um, I, I never really expected the kind of response that he's gotten uh, in terms of him almost being some sort of a weird kind of animated teen idol. Um, he's my most scarred, and uh, no pun intended, he's my hottest character that I voice. Um, and the, the little girls and the ladies and they all can't get enough of him, which is uh, pretty interesting, especially given the fact that he hasn't actually talked that much just yet. Yeah, he's got um, that kind of that uh, mystery, mystery going, you know? What yes, I mean? yes. That tall, dark, and handsome guy. Indeed, indeed, and he is mysterious. And it's complicated. I don't know that I'd just, you know, put him, you know, fully in the villain category. It. It's all about perspective. Yeah. Um, but, I mean, honestly, I'm, I'm stoked. And as far as preparation, um, I don't do much other than get pretty excited when I have a session recording him. I mean, um, everything that I've done for this character is, has been super cool. Like, I'm always super stoked to be in the booth doing him. Awesome. Now, as we know, Attack on Titan's coming to an end. Yes. Right? Yes. Like, how, do you, how do you feel about that being, you know, voicing the character for as long as you have, and now it's, it's going away, right? I mean, it sucks, but at the same time, uh, like Dobby, he's another character that I personally have been wanting to know what what happens and what his backstory is. And they're finally getting into that for both of these characters, um, which is exceptionally gratifying. I can't even tell you. Like, I'm at a, I'm at a moment uh, in my career in this where I feel like, I don't know, I feel pretty fulfilled. Um, I'm sad that it's going away, but at the same time, I can't wait to see that second half of that last season. Now, I don't read ahead in the manga. I've had some things spoiled for me, <laughs> um, for both characters, but I personally try to kind of be fresh when I go in and kind of learn the information as it's happening um, and get an honest uh, reaction, an honest read, um, if that makes sense. Yeah, no, I, I completely understand. But, man, I'm. Yeah, I'm very, very happy with where both these characters are at this point, and, um, and they're both complicated. Uh, I don't even know that I'd put either of them in the villain category. They're anti-heroes. <laughs> uh, it depends one. on your perspective, you know? There's a, you know, there's a lot of uh, people here today at the convention that, and the last two days now that have been here. I mean, it's just been flooded with fans for you, right? Yes. <clears throat> so I do know that a lot of people, you know, become inspired by you and want to become a voice actor. If I'm not mistaken, you've done, since you were a kid, you've done a lot of stuff, right? Like oh, theater yeah. and film. And So how did you transition from that into voice acting? And do you ever think you want to get out of voice acting for a little bit, maybe take a hiatus and you know, man, do something else? I, I am a working actor, so, so there has been no hiatus in my on-camera stuff. It's like I audition for on-camera stuff, I audition for VO stuff, and it's all about, like, it's all I do, and I'm a single dad. So, oh, wow. um, you know, if I book a job, that's the job I've got. And, and I'm very grateful and, and lucky to have managed to you know, forge a career out of this, this crazy, crazy business. As far as the transition, it wasn't ever a full transition, um, but basically out of theater and film work, I ended up um, working in anime. Uh, somebody, a director who'd seen me in both of those other forums, um, needed a new actor for a particular part, needed to replace an actor. And mm. we happened to be at the same birthday party at a bar together, and we closed down the <laughs> bar together, and the end of the night, he's like, you know, I like your voice, man. I think you'd be a good match for this guy I'm getting rid of. Why don't you come in Monday and see if you can do this, this ADR thing for anime? And in those days, it was a hell of a lot less um, technologically advanced, like working off of paper scripts. You try to memorize a, a page of cues at a time. You're literally watching a VHS tape on a screen through the window of the booth you're in, and they're recording you with reel to reel. I'm aging myself, I know, but <laughs> um, but I just happened to have a knack for it, and I think that probably came out of my theatrical background mm. uh, in terms of being able to memorize things relatively quickly. And then the projection of your voice, indeed, on stage indeed, and, so, and, yeah. and yeah, theater was good was good training for for voice acting. But yeah, I continue to work in commercials and in films, and um, yeah. 
Theater's the only thing that's kind of fallen off. Got it. But okay. it requires more time than anything else. <laughs> now, I don't want to take too much of your time because you've got a lot of fans waiting. Um, so one last thing before we go. I just, want, I just wanted to ask, like, what's the most weirdest thing since you've been doing conventions that you've had a fan do, say, or give you? Um, the strangest moment that I had was relatively early on in my career. I was in an anime called Darker Than Black, mm. where I was the, the main character uh, um, who was, I guess, uh, for lack of a better way of describing it, he was the closest that I'll come personally to ever playing Batman. So he, mm. was, he was a masked contractor with these kind of electrical powers. <laughs> and then by day, he was, you know, a, a mild-mannered student. And so it was two characters in one. But Funimation did this thing for New York Comic Con when this anime premiered, where they hired about a dozen actors to cosplay as my character. And they did not tell me this. Oh, wow. So at some point, literally a dozen of my characters in contractor in killer mode with the mask on approached me. And I ended <laughs> up getting a bunch of photos. I mean, at first I was a little alarmed, right? But it yeah, was yeah. pretty freaky, but also really badass. Nice, awesome. Well, again, I appreciate you taking your time out today to, you know, interview with yeah, us here at Geek Impulse. Of course. And, you know, we wish you the best on your future success and everything. Brother. So, thank you. Thanks so much. Yeah, Keep watching. <laughs>